Good morning from Medellin. We are starting off today by trying another Colombian speciality. This is called Buenuelos. We come to this place where you can get three Buenuelos and two coffees and it's cost 13,200 pesos, which is just over $4 Canadian and probably just over $3 US. I'd say that's pretty good for breakfast for two people. Heck yeah, let's give it a go. I have gone for a Buñuelo filled with Arequipe, which is Dolce de Leche, whereas Nick has gone for one filled with Guava, and then another one filled with coffee. And basically, it's just a fried dough ball filled with whatever topping you order. Cannot wait to try this. Wow, that is so good. It is nice and warm, and the outside of the dough is slightly crispy, and the inside is just so soft. It tastes better than a donut, basically. We're taking the metro to meet our tour group at San Javier station and you have to buy a rechargeable card which is 10,000 pesos which is about $3.30 and then you can add as many fares or trips onto that. Each individual fare is 3,210 pesos which is just below $1.30 Canadian and we ended up putting the on because that's what we're going to be doing over the course of today and tomorrow. So as soon as we reach San Javier Station, we will meet up with a tour group for a free walking tour of Community 13. Before we head on to walking tour, but I do just want to say that like the entire experience of doing this has been so straightforward. The network is super clean. You have ample room for yourself to sit down as well, and it's air conditioned, which is better. So yeah, all in all, a really good first experience of the Medellin. Muna 13 is Medellin's most famous of its 16 communes. While the neighborhood is now energetic and vibrant, most well known for its street art like graffiti, murals, and sculptures, as well as hip hop music, it was once one of the most unsafe areas in the world known for drugs and violence. There are a total of 19 barrios within Comuna 13, La Independencia being the most popular with tourists due to its famous escalator. The area that would become known as Comuna 13 was founded by displaced farmers who were fleeing violence from other areas in Colombia. The poor and unskilled immigrants settled on the outskirts of Medellin, building illegal houses made of orange brick and cement closely stacked together up against the Andes Mountains. The lack of government influence in the community as well as poverty created the perfect opportunity for extreme left-wing guerrilla groups and extreme right-wing paramilitaries to recruit members to their respective causes during the 1960s and 1970s. Comuna 13's location next to San Juan Highway made it a desirable district to control as the highway connects the neighborhood to Turbo, the closest city on the Caribbean Sea. Between 1980 and the early 2000s, guerrilla groups, paramilitaries, and cartels competed to control the highway and the subsequent import and export of goods, including illegal drugs. In 2002, the Colombian government attempted to exterminate the guerrilla groups and paramilitaries from Comuna 13 through two questionably successful joint police and military operations, Mariscal and Orion. In order to gain the trust of the community, the government then invested in healthcare through hospitals, education through more schools, job opportunities, cultural centers, and outdoor spaces within Comuna 13, all of which have helped rehabilitate the neighborhood. The famous escalator was installed between 2010 and 2011 to improve mobility and accessibility within the district for locals. The unintended side effect of the escalator was tourism, which led to an increase in restaurants, shops, pubs, museums, and cafes in the area. Para el 
centro. Para adentro. Para adentro. Para adentro. We've just finished our walking tour of Camuta 13 and you have to do this. Our tour guide's name was Christian and he's from here. And I think really the best thing is to do this with a local. He imparted so much knowledge. I feel like I really understand and fully grasp the history now, especially between, I'd say the 1960s and into even like maybe 2010. And you could just really feel how energetic and again vibrant this community is similar to Gethsemane in Cartagena. This has been my absolute favorite thing we've done here in Medellin so far. Me too. I think this was the experience of Medellin that I was hoping for when we went through the city center yesterday but the very fact that we're here you get to really soak up the atmosphere in this neighborhood and also the views that you get out of the valley and the rest of the city are second to none. Postcards and even what we've been filming and taking photos of today, I don't think it does it justice, you just have to be here. Yeah, this is where this neighborhood has a one-up on Gethsemane, is the views, the setting in nature, in the mountains. I think actually in a certain pocket of the Andes mountains, to be honest, it is just spectacular. It truly is. What are we doing now? Good question. I think maybe heading back to the downtown area, which is where we're staying, and then finding somewhere for lunch, I'd imagine. Yeah, that sounds about right. I think it was actually time of day. So, shall we? Let's go. That was another successful Amuesa outing. That cost 10,000 pesos for each of us, which means that basically we ate out for around $6.70 or something like that Canadian, which is absolutely insane value considering what we got. You ended up getting beef. Yes. And I ended up getting chicharron, which is like fried pork belly, and it was just divine. Oh. I cannot extol the virtues of doing these kinds of things enough and really I hope that the more of these local dishes that we show to you in local places then hopefully that encourages you to really make the most of a more local culinary experience when you visit countries like this one. I think the reason that I love eating where the locals do is because you get traditional food, it is always delicious and bonus. It's just the best value for money. So I don't love to eat in touristy areas, not least because it's expensive, but I really feel like you are able to integrate into culture through food. 100%. It's one of the major doors to understand more about how the country operates, I think. And so, yeah, another very special outing and Honestly, pretty much all the Colombian food that we've tried so far has been nothing but superb. So again, we hope we're extolling its virtues so that you do come here and you enjoy it in the same way. But that is all that we have planned for today. We have a major day booked for tomorrow, so we will definitely be taking you along for that. Until next time though, take care. And keep smiling.